hello friends now let's come to our next component that is uh, message driven beans so in this particular uh, component we are uh, trying to send the messages uh, directly to some messaging system and uh, they are routed via standard inflow mechanism to the EJB subsystem and eventually uh, backing uh, MDP instance so by making use of the message driven bin instance we are trying to make use of sending the messages so message driven bin is uh, completely asynchronous listener so as soon as we make use of some message sending then it is just going to send the messages so after this uh, let us see how exactly this is going to work so whenever a client is making use of one request uh, by making use of one message then there will be a broker architecture in between in the form of subscriber uh, uh, you must be subscribed to that particular message so by making use of that broker architecture you will just send it to um, uh, send it, send the message by making use of one thread that is the message will be for, uh, will be created in the form of a thread and the consumer uh, will be sent by making use of a java uh, jca adapter that is java communication adapter so by making use of that uh, adapter uh, there will be a EJB container wherein we will be having a message driven bean which creates the instances of different different messages and sends the messages to the consumer so this will be uh, making use of a listening on events via messaging subsystem so the messaging subsystem in this case is nothing but our GC adapter and our broker and the consumer so the message driven bean usually works in this fashion where a client makes use of a request from the book broker architecture via jca adapter and the jca adapter it makes use of a mdb which creates a instances inside the ejb container and the ejb container gives the response back to the client uh, in the form of an acknowledgement saying that the messages have been sent so uh, here we are making use of one more particular type of a resource called as JMS and the JMS is nothing but a vendor neutral API that can be used to access enterprise messaging systems so enterprise messaging systems like uh, uh, oriented middleware message oriented middleware or something like that so we have uh, many examples like open JMS or Q, active MQ, Cupid, Sonic MQ then we have something called as uh, Sonic MQ, uh, this one Twilio, and uh, many other uh, uh, networks or APIs which uh, help us to work with the uh, API uh, messaging services. So, applications that make use of the JMS are called as JMS clients, and the messaging system that handles routing and delivery of messages is called the JMS provider. So, uh, JMS clients and the messaging systems uh, are very very important whenever we are trying to work with the message driven beans so applications all the applications open jms uh, hornet q act to mq all these make use are nothing but the jms clients and the message providing systems uh, delivery of messages uh, this uh, uh, are nothing but jms providers so what exactly happens here is uh, we are just uh, trying to create a message by making use of some providers now Twilio is a company which helps us to send the messages uh, from uh, the internet so most of the uh, web applications make use of this Twilio and uh, I am a client who wants the services of a Twilio then I will be called as a JMS client and uh, Twilio is a JMS provider who will provide us the J, uh, this one messaging system so which will be handling all the complete routing and delivery of the messages so uh, in this way uh, we are going to make use of the JMS services so a JMS application is a business control system composed of many JMS clients and generally uh, one JMS provider a JMS client that sends a message is called a producer and a client that receives a message is called a consumer so here I will be a producer and the uh, client who receives a message is called a consumer and between that we have a JMS client so a single JMS client can be both a producer as well as a consumer as well 
JMS facilitates uh, sending messages from uh, enterprise beans from a messaging service sometimes called as message broker or router. So message brokers are have been around for a couple of decades. Uh, the oldest and most established is IBM's MQ series. So now we have uh, many of them uh, which are working in uh, working for the JMS message sending facility. So there are many brokers as well as routers which are helpful for working with the messaging. Now JMS is completely asynchronous. So this is the most important thing. So one of the principal advantage of uh, JMS messaging is it's asynchronous. It, it means that it is not going to lock any of the instance and everything. So as soon as the message has been sent, then it is uh, uh, least bothered about what has happened to that message and there is nothing like instance lock and everything. So uh, we don't have to worry about the uh, synchronicity or the deadlock whatever happens with our uh, instances inside our container so in other words a jms client can send a message without having to wait for a reply so contrast this flexibility with synchronous messaging of java rmi or java jax rpc so uh, when we are making use of uh, rpc or java rmi that is remote method invocation that we make use of the synchronous messaging so uh, remote procedure calls makes use of a procedure call from one client to another uh, client or another server or a client is making a request to the server for any service then the server must respond to it and it must give the uh, instance uh, that is whatever service is needed it must give the response back to it so there is a flow of two-way flow of the uh, messages or to a flow of the data but when we are working with the JMS then it is only one flow so that is what this particular slides explains about so next JMS clients send messages asynchronously to destination uh, usually it will be a topic it will be using a destination in the form of a topic or queue uh, from which other JMS clients can also receive messages so when a JMS client sends a message, it does not wait for a reply. It sends the message to a router, which is responsible for forwarding the message to other clients. So there is no effect on the client if one or more recipients are unavailable. So once delivered, the sender will continue with its work. So it's the router's responsibility to make sure that the message eventually reaches its destination. So client sending messages are decoupled from the clients receiving them senders are not dependent on the availability of receivers so these are some features of the jms clients so the limitations of rmi make jms uh, an attractive alternative for communicating with other applications using the standard gndi con naming construct con uh, naming context an enterprise bean can obtain a jms connection to a jms provider and use it to deliver asynchronous messages to other java applications so user registration EJB. So this is for trying to fire one message event. So denoting that a new user has been created. So a client is making use of a request to create a new user. So a new user EJB, a user registration EJB is being used for the message broker and the message is created here and it will be sent in the form of a, a message to other systems. So the EJB container will register that user then makes use of that message and sends the message to other systems without waiting for what exactly happens to the other systems or the clients so jms message model messaging models we have two messaging models one is publish and subscribes and one is called as point to point which is also called as p2p so these are two uh, messaging domains of jms messaging models so let us see how publish and model of messaging works. So publish and uh, subscribe model will work only when we are trying to subscribe the things from that particular message sending authority. So here the client is making use of uh, one message, then we are using one type topic. And if there are subscribers to that particular topic, then we are using M1, M2 messages will be delivered to uh, M1, uh, that is subscriber 1 or subscriber 1. So whatever the messages are being sent by the client, those messages will be sent to the subscribers. Something like uh, we are subscribed to some YouTube channels, then the YouTube channel will be sending us the messages 
uh, about the updations of the videos and everything so those are nothing but subscribe subscribe uh, subscriptions so only if there is a subscription then they will be getting the notification or the message otherwise no so there is one more point to point model which is direct contact uh, where we are having a client our messages are being used here and the message will be there in the form of a queue and messages will be sent to each one of the users or the clients separately by making this a point to point where uh, there is no need of any subscription directly will be sending the messages based upon the one to one uh, handling so jms message to, uh, jms based message driven pins makes use of a uh, annotation called as at the rate of message driven pin and activation config property as two annotations and uh, the life cycle of a message driven pin is something like this so we create a new instance and make use of all the injections uh, before uh, that is uh, after creation of our instance we make use of all the assignments whatever we need to do and the instance will be created and present inside the method pool and making use of the business method we send it all the uh, all the messages to the peer to the clients whatever are been requested and we make use of uh, the pre-destroy uh, function before it is going to get destroyed so the next thing what we are going to see is the connector based message driven bin so java connector uh, based uh, java jca provides a standard service provider interface spi that is uh, that allows any enterprise uh, service to plug into the any java uh, ee container system so jca defines that is java connector adapter uh, connection adapter uh, defines a messaging contract specifically tailored to message driven pins and it defines the contract between an ejb container and asynchronous connector so that message driven pins automatically process incoming messages from the enterprise information services so uh, whenever we are trying to make use of this then the jca becomes a very important one the J jca is uh, most important thing whenever we are trying to work with the message driven pin because it uh, uh, makes use of a, a tailored uh, specifically for message driven pins and jca provides a standard so uh, interface service provider interface which uh, allows the enterprise information systems to plug in into any java enterprise container system so how this works so uh, whenever a client is making use of a message a message link is being sent to the physical destination so this is nothing but message link abstraction which delegates to a real destination so how these are implemented so we make use of a stateless uh, session pin here and uh, we are just trying to make use of the text message uh, resource is connection factory and the mapped name is uh, my queue so we are using the connection factory and the uh, my queue uh, as a uh, uh, resource uh, whenever we are trying to send the messages point to point we use the my queue then we are using this uh, business method inside the stateless session bin and here we are using connection and uh, create factory dot create connection which is used for creating the connection between the uh, jms and the client and we are using the session for connect dot create session which creates a session which makes use of a uh, connection open with the uh, zero value and message consumer receiver session dot create so we are creating one session uh, for the consumer with the queue whatever we have created and we create a text message and after creating the text message we are trying to make use of a receiver dot receive which is used for receiving the messages then so after receiving the messages from the client return text message dot text uh, dot get text so after receiving this message we can access that particular text so similarly we have the jms apis uh, which connect for the topic connection factory and the topic so uh, let us discuss this in our next session uh, about this uh, program in detail